Hello everybody, welcome back to Red Tool House. Today is gonna to be part two of what we tried to do last week, and that was get some beach on the mill here. So instead of me trying to do a recap, I'm gonna let the narrator tell you what's going on while I get the mill set up. In last week's exciting episode, our would-be lumberjack found himself hunting for the perfect beech tree in the woods. He faced near impossible obstacles like sloped ground, gnats, flying sawdust, and baggy pants. He flirted with defeat as the 90 degree temperatures started doing odd things to him. Come on, Daddy. Please let me be beautiful. I just want to be beautiful once, Daddy. Stay tuned now to see if our plucky hero can turn these logs into lumber despite the odds and having to skip lunch. Do you ever feel like you're just going to have one of those days? <laughs> this one's shaping up to be that way. All right, so the first issue, those of you guys who follow the channel know that I created this um, sawhorse, for lack of a better term, just to stand when the log is too heavy for my tractor to pick up cleanly, completely. Then I put one end up on this stand that's the same height as the saw bed, and I can go pick up the other side, set it on, and then just roll it on. No big deal. Well, I went to grab my... Uh, my log stand that I created a couple years ago and went to pick it up <laughs> and it's paper. The carpenter ants have just done a number on it. So, uh, so it's toast. So you saw how I lifted that up on there. Well, of course, not being able to see the back, I didn't realize that I had the front of the beach jammed against my log dog. I usually leave those up so the log didn't roll off the backside. Well, it bent that whole bunk this way. So, I can still use it. Fortunately, it bent it laterally and not this way, so it throws off my 90, but I'll have to straighten that back out at some point when I get this milling done. Mill's out of gas, so we're gonna gas it up and uh, see if this was worth doing. You know, that's one issue in, in understanding exactly what your mill is able to do. You know, this mill from Norwood is their midline mill, and it's not built as well as my first mill was. My first mill that I had in 2000 is now like the HD36. It's just much, much more heavy duty. So when you put something that's super heavy like this on here, you may be stressing uh, some of the engineering. Engineering is made to hold the weight vertically, not to have weight come at it from this side. So that's where I've uh, obviously pushed it. asked me how old I thought this beach was. I thought it was about 40 to 50. Counting the rings, looks like it's 55. 55 year old tree. Five years older than me.
All right, so we got our uh, log squared into a cant. And uh, man, that is like, uh, <laughs> that is like pushing through hickory. That stuff is hard as a rock and really, really gritty, almost sandy. Sawdust is really gritty. Uh, you saw me struggling with some of those slabs. Man, they, uh, they definitely weigh a, a bit. And that trunk, of course, was really trumpeted out at the base, really flared out, so it made for a really heavy end. Smashed my finger pretty good, but that's part of it, right? Okay, so what I'm gonna do is swap my blade now that I've cut through my bark with an older blade that's been on the mill previous logs. It's time to take it off and put a new blade on. I think we're gonna cut four quarters and eight inch wide is what we're looking for. And it saw me isolate the heart so the heart should be in the dead center of that cant so it doesn't end up running through uh, my boards and causing uh, even more opportunity for warpage. So we'll cut out the heart and, and totally discard it or maybe make a two by two square, whatever. We'll see how the heart gets isolated when we get down to it. So here's the heart, almost completely isolated. In fact, here's the pith, the actual center of the tree. It's going to be in this board when I mill it out, so it'll be sacrificial. There's a little bit that showed up in this other board, but I did a decent job isolating that so it's not going to be running through all my boards. And man, this is tough. It's, it's already, I'm starting to get a little bit of a ripple. 
in it from where uh, where my blade is is dulling. So I think I can finish out this log, and then I'm going to have to sharpen some blades. It's really pretty wood. It actually even has some medullary ray fleck in it, like oak gets in sycamore when you see it cut at um, quarter sawn. That's what this would be, is quarter sawn here. Pretty wood. Weighs an absolute ton, though. <laughs> Right, so that's 14 8 inch wide boards by a little over 10 feet long. Got them in the barn here so they can start air drying. A little extra weight with some white oak on top. Keep them from trying to bow up. We'll see how much this uh, beach moves as it dries out. All right, so before I can mill the next log, I need to sharpen some blades because I used my last one. I've got a box of new ones, but I hate to crack those open yet. So I'll need to go into the workshop and mill those. If you want to see how we mill, or how we sharpen, I actually have a video. I'll link to it up above here. And uh, got the other beach log to mill. So we'll probably get to that later this week. And I don't know that I'll show that. I may do an update on it. But the real question is, how is this stuff going to ha handle drying out? Is it going to curl up like a piece of bacon? Or is it going to uh, do okay? The plan will be to get it air dried enough then I can take it into the table saw, run it through the planer, and I'm um, probably going to do some flooring with it if it holds up. So we'll see how that goes, and we'll definitely detail that when that time comes along. Well, I appreciate everybody watching. Take care.